Let's talk about that Gillette commercial. Aww, Gillette recently released a commercial that's garnered a lot of attention and some controversy, but in order to address it, we have to look at it in two separate layers. The first layer is as a commercial. The second layer is addressing the topic that they tried to address themselves and may or may not have done a good job with. First of all, as a commercial, I'm kind of like, meh. Hear me out. I think that there is such a thing as toxic masculinity, and I think most men would agree that there's such a thing. But commercials in general, when they paint men as problematic, needing to be fixed, it's going to alienate the men who are watching. Now, a lot of the commercials that you see are for women, and it shows the man, uh, he's usually some doofus of a husband who's caught in the blinds in the background, he can't figure out how to do life, or he's some oaf of a caveman who needs the woman to figure it out, or the product that the commercial is selling, and that alienates the men. But who cares, most of them are for comedy and they're not to be taken seriously. This commercial alienated a large portion of the audience, which is men, not because they disagree with the topic, but because the way it was presented was condescending. Uh, Gillette took a didactic tone as if to say that every man is guilty of toxic masculinity, when in fact, I don't think every man and probably not even the majority of men are guilty of the things that the commercial addresses. Most men are not bullies. This isn't the 1980s or the 1950s where the jock picks up the nerd by the ankles and shakes him to get the loose change out of his pockets. That kind of bullying doesn't exist. The kind of bullying that we see now is online bullying and everybody, feminists included, are guilty of that kind of bullying. And neither one is good, we should stop it, but the way the commercial presented it was as if every man is just tolerant of bullying or their bullies themselves. The boys wrestling, I don't see that personally as a sign of bullying. They might have meant it that way, but it didn't come across that way to me. It just looked like boys being boys. And yes, there are some times where boys will be boys, meaning boys will be aggressive, boys will be competitive, boys will be physically active, and even roughhouse a little bit with each other. I see that as healthy, the commercial just didn't land for me. If it was trying to give a message, it didn't land for me. The pack of boys chasing another boy, when does that happen? That's that's not real. That's just, it was an over-the-top exaggeration. So the message failed in that way for me as well. Most men did not need this commercial to tell them how to treat women. It's not like Gillette was breaking some new ground here. It felt more like Gillette was jumping on a bandwagon. Whenever I see a commercial, whatever the product, whatever the company, I try to tune most commercials out. But whenever I see a commercial get political, I just think to myself, oh, well, they went activist. And I just kind of tune it out. No offense, it's a commercial. I'm not getting my source of truth and justice from a product placement. So if somebody's upset with the commercial, they probably have a good reason to be. If somebody thinks the commercial is the best thing ever, they probably have a good reason. Why? Because toxic masculinity is a real thing and should be addressed. Toxic masculinity, I think, goes back to the root of objectification of women. The one area where they began to hit home was when they showed Terry Crews and when they showed the father-daughter YouTube clip. That leads me to the second layer of how we can look at the commercial, which is in the content. Toxic masculinity is a real thing. Again, sometimes that term is overused and sometimes it's being uh, reported when it's not really present. But there is a form of toxic masculinity because men oftentimes do objectify women. If Gillette really wanted to go for the jugular, they could have gone there and addressed pornography. There is a pornography epidemic in this country. And if we really want to address a root cause of why men mistreat women, there's an objectification that enters a young boy's mind the moment he sees pornography and objectifies women even subconsciously. They, they hinted in the commercial about this topic when they showed Terry Crews, who has stood up against pornography and even shared publicly his testimony of coming out of an addiction for porn pornography. That takes real courage. That's real manhood. That's being a real man to confess something that could be embarrassing, but to be vulnerable and to have courage. Gillette just didn't go there. It felt more like they were trying to jump on a bandwagon for Me Too rather than really address the root. If they really wanted to address another root of toxic masculinity, 
it would have been with the fatherlessness that is also epidemic in this nation, in this generation. It started a long time ago. It is multicultural, but they did address this slightly when they showed the father-daughter clip of the African-American man and his daughter, and he was speaking life into her. That was great. But the problem is, unless we address as a full systemic problem, fatherlessness, the baby daddy syndrome, the father, or he's not really a father, the man gets his, his girlfriend pregnant and then he's nowhere to be found. That is an epidemic that has to be addressed in this country and Gillette didn't go there. I don't expect Gillette to go there. They're a razor company. Procter & Gamble could open up a nonprofit. They could do seminars and community events and they could do sensitivity training and that would be great. But nothing will address toxic masculinity or toxic femininity or anything toxic without the gospel. We need Jesus Christ in order to see ourselves the way that we should and in order to see our brothers and sisters properly. God created people in His image for men to see women as the princess, as the daughter of the Most High, requires Jesus to come in and make a change in our hearts. In order for women to see men the proper way as sons of the King, they need to have Jesus in their hearts. There's no way Procter & Gamble or Gillette could make that leap, especially not in a commercial. Now, if you want to talk radical, if you want to see a real publicity stunt, they could have invoked Jesus. They could have gone there for the gospel. They could have talked about how we need Jesus to transform lives. And you know why? It's because there is a systemic problem. The fatherlessness is a cycle that repeats itself because one person who's wounded passes on that hurt to another, and they haven't been taught fathering from the heart of God Himself who is the great father. The pornography business has continued to multiply and multiply billions of dollars because people are hurt and they're wounded and they see with a perverted view rather than with the eyes of God. You have to have that conversion in order to see things properly. I don't expect Gillette to go there I don't blame them for not talking about Jesus, who is the actual answer, who would actually help with the root of toxic masculinity and everything else. To me, maybe it was a publicity stunt. Maybe every single person in the whole company is on board with truth and justice. But I'm telling you this, the only solution is Jesus. And you might have had these kind of conversations already, but mostly what I've seen on Facebook and other social media has been totally devoid of the gospel. We're talking about the commercial. We're talking about the impact. We're talking about the way that it came across. We're talking about the content. But in the mix, we have to remember Jesus really is the answer. Hey, it's Bruce Wham on Spirit Life. Don't forget to subscribe.